Hello everybody. Hope you all are doing great. Welcome to my channel. This video is a part of the Christ Diaries and today as requested by all of you, I will be helping you guys chalk down the average monthly expenditure of a student at Christ University. This video is going to be a little long as I've broken it up into different different parts so that it is beneficial for each one of you to understand. So now, let's get started. Now, before I start, there are a lot of important things that you guys need to take a note of. The thing is, always expenditure depends upon person to person. It is very very variable depending on your living style, your eating habits as well as your social life. So, you guys can choose to stay in expensive accommodations, then your living expenditure will be higher than a person who is choosing to stay in a cheaper accommodation. Same is the case with eating habits. If you're eating out regularly, then obviously your monthly expenditure is going to be higher than a person who is eating cheap food or home food each and every day. Same is the case with social life as well. If you guys are going out traveling every day or once in a week, and if you're traveling out very frequently, then you then your monthly expenditure is going to be higher than a person who is not traveling. So these are a few important points that I wanted you guys to make a note of because it is very very important in understanding what kind of monthly expenditure you will be having based on these three things. Now the major expenditure of a student at Christ University is going to be its his or her rent. Rent is I think the majority of your monthly expenditure is going to be your rent. For the ease, I've broken it down into three parts, which is a person staying in hostel, a PG, or a rented apartment. For hostels, I've further broken it down to main campus, PGR campus, and Kengeri campus. For PGs, I've broken it down for to boys PG and girls PG. And for rented apartment, I've just broken it down to near main campus or the near or near Banagata campus. So let's get started. Now hostel fees. For the main campus, this is the uh, this is I've got the official document from Christ University. I'll also be putting down the link of this PDF in the description, so you you guys can check it out later as well. But this is to give you an idea of how much would it cost for a girl staying in the main campus. As you can see, the triple stay sharing room is for twenty eight thousand plus ten thousand is the maintenance fees. This is for the whole year. Same is for twin sharing that is fifty nine thousand. Single sharing which is seventy six thousand. And single special, which is eighty one thousand. Now a lot of people are confused between single versus single special, double versus double special. So actually, the thing is, the single special is or the double special rooms are the ones which are a little bigger, or they try to offer you something other than the normal, uh, other than the normal rooms. That is the reason they charge you extra for that. It could be either you have a bigger toilet, or you. It could be you have a balcony in the room. Or your rooms are just bigger in general, or you might have a air conditioner in your room and things like that. So because of that reason, your single special, double special prices are higher than the single or the normal double. But again, you have to check to the particular place you are booking to know exactly what is the particular difference between single versus single special and double versus double special. I've already made a video on the. Pros and cons of staying in hostel versus PG versus rented apartment. So make sure you also check that out. This video is majorly going to be for cost purposes. Now for boys in main campus, there are a lot of options. Firstly, you have a four sharing room, which is going to cost you thirty eight thousand three hundred and ninety four rupees, but five thousand is refundable. So you guys can just take this amount for triple sharing at this forty thousand three hundred and fifty six. Twin sharing special is fifty seven thousand three hundred and forty eight. And twin sharing is four thousand three hundred and eighteen. This expenditure is for the whole year. So if you divide it by twelve, you would get to know your monthly expenditure in terms of staying in the hostel at Christ University. This, guys, do not include your food expenditure. Now, hostel and there is another hostel in the main campus, which is the Christ Hostel. So this is the expenditure for that. I think all the rooms in the Christ Hostel are on double sharing basis, and seventy three thousand is the amount which you would be paying for that. And you guys can break it up into different installments and pay accordingly. Now, for hostel fees in BGR, as you would know, there is no hostel for girls in the BGR campus, but there is a hostel for boys in the BGR campus, which is called the Christ Hall. The hostel fees for triple sharing is forty thousand three hundred and fifty-six. 
and for twin sharing is 47,318. You can also have to you will also have to include your refundable deposit to get the total amount and then you can divide this amount by 12. Now for hostel fees in Kengiri campus, you have a triple sharing room which is going to cost you 38,350. This is for girls and twin sharing room which is 44,368. Now for boys is the Devadan Hall. For four sharing, you have 35,326 which is your maintenance fees as well as your hall fees. There's also a refundable deposit but you get the, uh, the refundable deposit later on once you're revocating the room. Then there is triple sharing which is 5,000 is the maintenance fee and 33,394 is the cost of the fee, uh, hostel. As well as you have twin sharing which is going to cost you approximately 55,386 rupees. So this is for Kengiri campus. Now PG for boys. Let me just tell you guys, you would find all kinds of PGs in a uh, near uh, uh, Christ University, be it the main campus or the Banagata campus. There would be PGs which are going to cost you very, very cheap. And then there are going to be PGs which are going to be very, very expensive. Like I've told you before, the expenditure actually depends on the kind of living style you want to choose. The higher the amount of the PG, that means they're offering you better services and hence people choose to stay in that PG. If you stay in a cheaper PG, which is definitely possible, but then there are a lot of things that those PGs would not offer you. This is just an average and the estimate that I've got from people who are currently staying in good PGs. In that, the single room is costing them around 18,000 rupees. Double sharing is costing them somewhere approximately rupees 13,000 and triple sharing is costing them around 10,000. Just to let you guys know again, you guys can find PGs which are literally half the amount of this as well as well as you can find PGs which are double the amount of this as well. So it is actually just on you which kind of PG you want to choose and the kind of living style you want to have. The expensive PGs definitely have a lot better infrastructure and the quality of their rooms and everything is very very nice. But the cheaper PGs are then obviously a little farther from Christ be it the main campus or the Banagata campus and in terms of the quality of the services and the kind of rooms, the washrooms, then the things are not that great. But it is again up to you. I know people who have stayed in a triple sharing room which has just costed them around 4,000 or 4,500. Then there are also people who have stayed in single rooms which has costed them just 30,000 rupees for the room. So that is on you. You would have to hunt your PGs. In the video that I've made of hostels versus PGs versus rented apartments, I've already named down famous PGs so you guys can definitely check them out. Along with that, there are a lot of new companies which have come up and they are offering great PGs at a lower cost so you guys can check them out as well. So this was the PG fees for boys. Now PG fees for girls. Whatever I've said for boys is also valid for girls. Usually the PG fees for girls are a little expensive because of a lot of reasons such as security but the average cost of a single room in a girls PG is 20,000 double sharing would cost you approximately 16,000 and triple sharing would cost you approximately 12,500 yes for girls also you can find cheaper PGs but I would suggest to all the girls to stay in good PGs because then they are very very safe and your parents at the back of the head they are relaxed because they know that you are staying in a good community in a good hostel with around good people so make sure that you try getting a very good PG I have already named down a lot of PGs in my previous video you can check them out my sister stayed in the Serenity PG so you guys can definitely check that out as well they have a lot of branches in Banagata Road campus in the main uh, Christ University Central campus. So you guys have a lot of options to choose from. Now PGs, the reason why they are expensive and in fact they are a lot, lot more expensive than the hostels is because they provide you with a lot of facilities. And these are a few facilities that they've provided, which is they have parking facilities, they have refrigerator. That means that in each of the floors in a PG, you would have a personal refrigerator where you can keep your stuff. In all the rooms, there would be almiras would be there. Security is there in terms of biometric access as well as guards and everything that you would also have for hostels. Then on, a, on PGs majorly, you have attached bathrooms. But in hostels, you might have to share the bathroom because they might have common bathrooms. Then there are TVs in each of the rooms. There's a power backup, there's CCTV, there's lift, there's washing machine. The Wi-Fi is included in your PG fees. There are indoor games, there's housekeeping, there's drinking of water and basically PG also has food which is not mentioned here but 
all the PGs offer you food and the if you choose a good PG to stay in, the food quality is very very good. So later on you would save a lot of money if you're staying in a good PG. Usually sometimes people just select a cheaper PG because they think that they they will be able to save money, but then the food of that PG is very very bad and you have to eat outside. So then it again just averages the cost and it then it just gets you back to the expensive PG. So I would rather say that invest in a good PG so that you get good food as well as you have a quality uh, you have a good standard of living. So but that is all up to you. But yes, one benefit that I found when I stayed in the PG for the first year was that a lot of things for me were taken care of in terms of the cleaning of the rooms, the electricity bill, the TV bill, the Wi-Fi bill, food, everything. So these are the facilities which are provided in the PG. Now, for rented apartment, this is just the average cost that I've got. Like I've said for hostels and like I've said for PGs, you guys can find cheaper apartments, but it's just that you might have to compromise on the distance or the quality of your living. But in main campus, if you want your own room in an apartment, it is going to cost you somewhere around 18,000 rupees. Around Bijar campus, if you want your own room in an apartment, be it a 2 BHK or a 3 BHK, it is going to cost you approximately rupees 9,000. And definitely, if you share your room, your rent is exactly going to become half. So if you have a 2 BHK and there are four people staying in that BHK, so you would approximately be just paying 5,000 to 5,500 rupees for the room rent. Same is the case with main campus, uh, near main campus. So if you have roommates staying in your room, and if you don't want your personal room, then automatically your rent just becomes half. That is where a lot of people think that staying in an apartment is cheaper than staying in either a PG or a hostel. But one, a lot of things that you guys have to make sure of is that this this piece does not include your electricity and your Wi-Fi charges. It does not include your cleaning and your laundry charges. it does not include your furnishing charges so whenever you're moving in a flat if it is a semi furnished flat because the prices that i've told you are for semi furnished flats you can also find furnished flats but then they're going to be very very expensive because then they're going to be providing you with beds the mattress tv and everything but if you go for a semi furnished flat you guys would also have to spend money in buying a fridge in buying a mattress in buying cupboards and depending on the flat that you have so you also have to take in take into note the furnishing charges but even though even if you buy things first hand or second hand you guys can sell them off later so it is just the depreciation amount that you would actually be paying but still like in the, initially when you join you would have to buy new things with your roommate so that is going to cost you along with that in rented apartments does not include your food and your help charges so you guys have to manage your food on your own in a rented apartment so either you can keep a cook and obviously the cook is going to charge you money for that and then you also have to uh, get groceries and things so this all this is not included in the price that i've told you i've just told you about the rent but if we are staying in a uh, apartment then obviously it gets shared with all the roommates and then uh, your uh, monthly expenditure comes accordingly but still these are the expenses that you have to uh, make a note of and this is in addition to your rent wherever you are staying be it in banagata road campus or near the main campus Now after rent another major expenditure that you guys would have is food now for all the people staying in a pg you do not like if you were staying in a good pg so you might like the food of your pg and you would not want to eat anywhere but your pg but for hostel people like i said the hostels do not have mess facility so you guys have to eat uh, food from outside but the cheapest food that you can get is in the christ university itself like in comparison to outside food in expensive restaurant christ university canteens are good and a lot of people staying in the hostels usually eat from the canteen itself so this is the average expenditure that you would be having breakfast can somewhere cost you from around 40 to 60 so the monthly expenditure would be rupees 1500 that is for 30 days if you eat breakfast this can definitely go higher or lesser according to your personal expenditure i don't think so it will go lesser because 40 is like the minimum you will spend on a breakfast it can definitely go double or higher depending on your appetite uh, for lunch the average expenditure is from somewhere from 80 to 120 is what you can have a decent meal and the average is going to come around 3000 rupees that is 30 days if you spend around 100 each day for lunch same is the case with dinner you spend somewhere around 80 to 120 so the average monthly expenditure is rupees 3000 for uh, your dinner now this is just and just your college canteen food 
I'm pretty sure you guys would not be eating 30 days just in the Christ University canteens. You guys will definitely be going out or sometimes eating from street food or something like that. So your expenditure is going to vary according to the kind of food you eat. But yes, if you want to take a minimum and if you just eat in the college canteens, it is somewhere going to cost you around 7500 But if you cook the food on your own, definitely it is going to come out way cheaper because like buying your groceries and if you don't have a cook, then obviously you save a lot of money if you guys can cook on your own and if you have those kind of facilities in your hostel. So make sure you check them out. In a lot of PGs also, they provide you with a small pantry where you can cook food. So you guys can definitely check those out as well. Other expenditures other than rent and food is the variable expenditure which definitely I will not be able to predict because it actually depends on a person to person. When I was staying in Christ University, there were people who spent literally double or triple of the amount I spent and there were people who spent one third of the amount I did. So it actually just depends on you. But these are the kind of variable expenditure that you guys can make a note of uh, while you're calculating your average monthly expenditure. So number one is transportation. If you are not staying closer to the main campus or the BGR campus where you're actually studying, you might have to spend money on your transportation to and fro each and every day. There are a lot of PGs that offer bus services, but then those the cost of the bus service is already included in the rent. Uh, but if you don't have that, then you might have to pay for Uber, Ola or the bus service. Or if you are having your uh, vehicle of your own, be it a car or a bike, then you also have to include the cost of the petrol for that. So that is the kind of transportation expenditure that you guys need to make a note of. Along with that, whenever you're roaming in and around Bangalore, you would have to be spending money on your transportation. If you're going to a restaurant, if you're going anywhere uh, around Christ University or exploring Bangalore, then you would have to pay your transportation cost. Next up is parties. Now, like I've said initially when I started this video, that social life is go really going to depend the kind of monthly expenditure that you have. So if you are a person who really likes to go for a lot of parties and things, then obviously your monthly expenditure is going to be higher than that of any other person who, who, is, who, doesn't, who doesn't want to party that much. Because once you go for parties, then obviously you might have to pay for an entry fees or if you are going out, then you eat and things like that. So that is the reason your monthly expenditure becomes higher. Next up is travel. Now that you are in Bangalore, I'm pretty sure you would want to explore things around Bangalore, be it Nandi Hills or be it some far off places such as Pondicherry, Gokarna and all this. I'm already planning a detailed video on the places you can visit uh, near Bangalore. But yes, if, you're, if you really like traveling and I'm pretty sure if you guys in college, I would highly recommend that you guys should definitely travel with your friends. And if you do that, then obviously you would have to include the cost of that as well in your monthly expenditure because you would be paying for your uh, hotels there, you would be paying for your travel and you would be paying for the food whenever you go out on weekends and travel with your friends. So that is another expenditure that you guys have to make a note of. Next up is books and stationery. So the Christ University fees does not include any money for books and stationery. So if you want to buy books or if you want any stationery, if you want Xerox of the notes and things, you would have to spend money for that. And then obviously you have to include that in your monthly expenditure. Next up is eating outside. So if uh, take a scenario of a person who, who has paid for a PG but still eat outside. So your monthly expenditure is going to be very, very high. Like I remember I, in the PG I stayed, I didn't like the food of that PG. So first year I literally ate out each and every day. So that is obviously going to be very, very expensive. Like sometimes you guys can eat cheap food and like I used to go in Christ University canteens and eat it. But then there are a lot of times where you would want to explore different restaurants and try different cuisines. And then obviously that is going to cost you money. And that is the reason you have to take into consideration eating outside uh, as an expenditure in your average monthly expenditure. Next up is miscellaneous expenditure and that actually just depends on you. So if you uh, if you've booked up a gym around Christ University, so you would be paying membership for that. If you're going for movies, then obviously you pay money for that. If there are some class lunches, which usually are there around ethnic day when you go out with your classmates and even just like that, if you have like normal lunches, a breakfast or dinners with your friends on weekends and things like that. So obviously that is another expenditure. If you like shopping and if you are shopping, uh, no matter what it is, even if it is for your room or for your clothes or anything, or if you're buying some electronic gadget, that is going to cost you. 
then there are birthday celebrations if it is your friend and you have to give them a gift or if it is your own birthday party then you celebrate it and you would want to celebrate with your friends so again that is an expenditure then mobile bill is one expenditure that you guys have to make a note of and then any other kind of coaching now that you guys are there for studying i'm pretty sure you might want to join some coaching classes for some other kind of certifications which is either inclined towards your course or it is not like sometimes people study for cat sometimes people study for their other certifications such as ca cma so for all those you would have to pay the money on your own for all the mate coaching material for the transport to that uh, center and things like that so that is another expenditure that you guys have to take into consideration last thing that i forgot to add in this list is fines so if you guys are in Christ University and if you don't obey the rules of Christ University then there might be fines such as you might have to pay a fine when you are when you don't meet the attendance criteria so that kind of expenditure also you need to take into consideration once you are calculating your monthly expenditure so i hope this video has given you an idea a rough estimate of the monthly expenditure i can just suggest you one thing that if you want your monthly expenditure to be less make sure that you find a cheaper accommodation because if you save money there then all the other expenses are controllable and then all these other expenditures which are the variables are not frequent expenditures like even if you're going out for a party you might just go out for a party once a month so that is not going to cost you so much even if you're traveling i'm pretty sure you would just travel only like once in two months or once in three months so that is not the major chunk of your expenditure the major chunk of your expenditure is your rent which you pay either to the hostel or to the pg or to the rented apartment so if you find that cheap automatically your living cost becomes very very less thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video has been useful for you all if you found this video useful make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because if you would do i would be highly motivated to make more videos for you all take care bye bye